What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the headquarters. This is the Fade the Public podcast. My name is Nicholas. That is Animal. That is Snacks. I told y'all we'd have a table. Uh, we are still obviously in the midst of building the table. It's mid-construction. Yeah, it'll it'll be very, very beautiful when we're finally done with... Uh, Sorry, that threw, that threw me off. When we're finally done with building it, the boomstick has a mind of its own. It's always ready to fucking pump out content, and so are we. Uh, obviously, we want to address the situation at hand. The protests around the country have gotten to a point where they have, they have taken over our lives for the most part, and it would be uh, remiss of us not to address them, but we, we don't want to talk too much about the topic. We're here to provide you with entertainment. We're here to provide you with uh, value. If, if you do want to uh, hear a more in-depth you know, thought process of, I, I probably speak for most of them uh, in, in my yes. podcast on the Why You Yelling podcast, which will be linked down below. But overall, general sense of things, please just stay safe. Please just don't be a racist piece of shit and yeah. you are cool <laughs> with us. We are cool with you. We started our Dynasty Draft Yesterday, you got all your sleepers in there. Who is it? David Montgomery. Are you serious? The live chat's going nuts right now. What is wrong with you? Open your fucking yeah, Use my glasses, assholes. I'm gonna fucking destroy this league. It's a wrap. <laughs> I'm part of league. Brett. Arm sleeve tattoo sucker chase my god. Do you think it's gonna get 300 fucking carries? Is it more likely that Josh Jacobs can handle 300 carries? I have tequila sweats. It was yesterday or two days ago? It feels like. It, I don't know, but it's cooking, man. Man, it is cooking it's right good. now. It's we, a good one. We are, it's a good one. We are ripping through the rounds thus far. We're three rounds into it. Uh, we're at the 403 currently. So basically, we're just going to talk about our, our, our thoughts on the draft so far. You know, good picks, bad picks, bunch of the trades. As you can see on the screen right now, the board is just riddled with trades. Yeah, um, good luck trying to follow along with whose pick is actually whose pick. Well, you could look at mine and Nick squads and just be like, wow, that's, that's those guys good. don't trade. They're that's just really good. Bad. Yeah, I actually did trade up for the 4-1, oh, so I missed my 4-10. But well, the first three rounds. Team and see who I picked. Yeah, anyways, this is what we're going to do today. We're just going to go over the draft. This is a real startup draft. The settings are super flex. It is a tight end premium, half PPR. So tight ends get a full point per reception, and the rest is pretty standard outside of that. Uh, within the draft, we have us three. We have Scott, who's editing the video you're currently watching right now. You have Mike and Noah from Bunk Bed Breakdowns. Let's go. Let's get it. What do you do? And you have a bunch of the dudes from the NYC draft vlog, which we will link down below if you want to go watch that shit. Uh, so we got a good squad together. It's going to be a really, really fun league as the years go by, I'd imagine. Sharps. Some sharps in this league. Got to be careful. I, I know of 11 of them. The, that animal guy, though. No. <laughs> that fucking animal maybe, guy. Don't do maybe, me maybe, like that. Maybe, uh, maybe that's, well, maybe we don't start with that, but oh, I can't wait. We'll get to it. Oh, yes, we we'll will. We'll get to it. The trades? everything one specifically just all all of it okay so unsurprisingly well actually one of my favorite parts of posting the board today was showing people that mike had the 101 and then he traded it away and one of his points of emphasis over bunk bed breakdowns the last couple of weeks were the fact that he keeps seeing people talk about trading christian mccaffrey is he in his cell window which is a ridiculous statement to start yeah. with but mike's been very adamantly against the idea of trading christian mccaffrey in dynasty leagues right now speak on it mike all right you need to sell CMC so you don't miss the sell window. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. That's all I have to say on this, okay? But look, no disrespect because look, I mean, I'm sure there's smart guys in there that oh, are hella numbers, disrespect. That are crunching numbers out there, but fantasy just doesn't have to be hard, guys. It just doesn't have to be hard. But for some reason, people love to make it hard. Like CMC is, is a once in a decade type of a fantasy asset. And I often compare him to Marshall Falk or I compare him to LT. Are you trying to fade this once in a generation <laughs> asset? It boggles my mind that people worry about winning trades more than winning championships. If you have a championship roster with CMC on it, you better fucking give me your first four and your second four and be willing to chop off your dick because I'm not going to sell him for anything less than that. And then he goes <laughs> he ahead trades. and, you know, for better or worse, trades Christian McCaffrey because he had the 101. Yeah. He did move it for, I believe, a second rounder, a fifth rounder, and a 2021 first. So, I mean, the, good return. the value is there. We'll see uh, what players fall in those spots. I always think it's fun looking back and seeing... Yes. 
Like, would you rather have Christian McCaffrey or these guys that you got here? Right. Yeah. Would you rather have Christian McCaffrey? Or would you rather have, you know, like Devonte Adams, fucking uh, DJ Chark, and next year's 2021 first. So that gets you a little bit more acclimated with like the value of the trades that go on in the league. So I was sitting there at the 103 and I was ready to trade back because I, I thought C-Mac would go one. I thought Saquon Barkley would go two. I thought Barkley was going two. Super, super, super happy that John traded up, took Patrick Mahomes at the 102. He said that uh, someone told me that he doesn't have any Mahomes anywhere invested in any of his leagues. So he wanted to diversify the fair revenue enough. a little That's bit. Enough. Diversify the revenue. Took Patrick Mahomes. So I was ecstatic. Within about three seconds, I took Saquon Barkley. This thing's yeah, that was like the easiest pick you've probably... We'll have to make this entire draft. Yeah, it was beautiful. So Saquon at the 103. Pierce traded up to get his boy Lamar Jacks. Business as usual through the 105. And then this is where things get interesting. Well, well, yes, hold on. Just a quick note. Kyle was the one to trade with Mike for C-Mac. And then he wound up getting very good point Elliott at the 105 which is a pretty damn good duo if you ask me that's scary that's going to be tough to beat on a week over week basis he's got a floor of like 50 points between the two of them c-mac zeke uh we'll have to see if the juice was worth the squeeze because obviously when you trade up when you have multiple picks in the top five of a of a startup that means any other picks you gave up your future or you gave up a lot of depth in order to make that happen um i went into let's talk about the mindsets going into the draft actually let's pull back a little bit i knew that there would be a lot of fucking craziness and commotion going on just because the big dogs community as a whole is just fucking so trigger and trade happy it's out of control to this point and i knew that would be the case in this one so i was like i'm gonna keep a level head depending on what happens with the 103 as soon as i got saquon i was like cool i got the anchor for my team i'm just gonna draft the best players available after that uh, i didn't really go in with a strategy in terms of like quarterback or we found out our draft order 24 hours before the draft kicked off so from there within like five seconds we of course we had a everyone trade tra- yeah. yeah everyone's like my trade is on the block it's like yes we know everyone's trade is on the block for every fucking pick we understand um also if you do want to join a big dogs dynasty startup league you could do that on discord which will be linked down below it is our free fucking basically chat forum we got like 2,000 members in there always starting dynasty leagues i think we got 60 of them fucking kicked off already if you've never done dynasty that's the place to start what were your guys thoughts going in uh, I, I mean, from the 11th spot, I was I was really considering going QB, QB and with Murray and Deshaun Watson. I think, think it was a really good idea you didn't do that. I am very happy I didn't either. And I'm glad Mike took Deshaun Watson the next pick after Murray. So after that, was there was there I really didn't have a strategy. So um, you were just talking about diversifying. I haven't had CEH in any leagues of mine own either. So at 202, what was it, 202? I was going to either take... Clyde or Jonathan Taylor and Animal, you made my decision easier by taking Taylor right before me. So, you know, no real thoughts that just picking I think good the, players. W- I think you would have regretted going double quarterback early just because the way the the way the rest you of the just wouldn't have had a running back. No, you know, you, I know the rest of your skill positions would have been fucking disgusting. Correct. They would have been awful. And um, I want I did want one. I did want a quarterback there. So yeah, good, you got good one pick. So I mean, yeah, I couldn't have been more wrong on Lamar Jackson. So I figure. Don't double down on a similar type quarterback. And Kyler Murray is, I'm very high on him. So I took him. So Animal. All right. Before so you made any moves, don't talk about the trade I'm process. I'm going to tell you the plan. Yeah. You, go, you had the, what, 107? I had the 107. Okay. Let's hear the plan. The original plan. So at first, I, I, I wanted to do my normal trade back like I always do. But then I was looking at the board and like I. Like you always do. I really You've done thought, one dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought I could get Zeke at the 1 6. And then Kamara at the one seven. I thought I would be able to have a Zeke Kamara one two punch, and that was going to be part of my four headed running back monster. I was Wrong. Like, four running backs right away. That was my strategy. Four running backs, four elite running backs, and just fucking run the table with them for the next two years because wide receivers don't matter. But Zeke went at the one five and threw a big wrench in my plan. So I ended up. I think getting, this is where you completely and utterly fell well, apart. I, yeah, exactly. This is what happened. So I took Zeke. Because that was, I was, I mean, it took Kamara because it was one of my guys that I was going to take no matter what. Okay, so, so Kamara, were you not influenced by that just being so on brand for you? Okay, so, Woo! without further ado, let's go! Animals Planet, you oh. are on the clock. Oh, yeah. You just do not look good. Ooh, but I feel good, baby. Ew. Uh, he represents. <laughs> Alvin Kamara. Ooh. I'm not mad. Let's go. Let's go. That's actually pretty good. Let's go. That was really good. Uh, I mean, I wanted him anyway, but I he, I was gonna take like Zeke before him. He wasn't my running right. back one at the time. Okay. I wanted Zeke first. 
So it wasn't because we were if all like, one it wasn't of because, there, yeah, it's obviously Zeke. It wasn't because we we have showed you that gif of yeah. you ripping yeah. your well, chest I mean, and saying Alvin I, Kamara. I did that because I do like Alvin Kamara. He's so a good player. some truth to He's it. He's a good player. It's not bad. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting. What happened next is uh, some I would like to exp- I would like to explain this because you're going to be biased towards yourself. You 100% are. You guys Say, aren't going to tell the true story. So yeah. you, you will have your please, rebuttal afterwards. Yeah, please. So animals, yeah, Mike, Mike down. animals sitting there at the 107. You traded off for the 106. So you're, you're at back-to-back picks, 106, 106 107. 107. He takes Alvin Kamara with the 106. He's sitting there at the 107. He tells us, I want to draft Joe Mixon. <laughs> Joe Mixon still still left to be drafted. He starts getting in talks with the person who's at was was Chris at one oh eight one ten. No, he had the one eight. Okay, so he had the one eight. Animal sit on the clock at the one oh seven. Joe Mixon available. Animal wants Joe Mixon. He starts talking to the one oh eight. The guy sitting at the one oh eight says, "I want Joe Mixon." That's quote who unquote, I'm quote unquote. That's who I'm trading up for. Animal will tell you. That he thinks he thinks he's like a psychologist over here. He thinks the guy is lying. So Animal <laughs> trains back from the 107 to the 108, thinking that this guy who just told him that he wanted Mixon wasn't gonna take just Mixon. Pure lying, Chris. Face. In in your defense, Chris is one of the Chris. You're a fucking sweetheart. You're one of the nicest people I've ever met. To be honest with you, I can second that. And and I Chris would not lie to you about that. You don't know him. I didn't don't, know Chris. He doesn't know I, Chris. Do you think? think, do you think I, I think everyone's a slimy snake. Okay, what? fine, but Before, do you think maybe right? you could have just like texted us being like, yo, what, what's this guy Chris's deal? Do you think he, he really wants Mixon or not? And we probably would have said if you would have been he like he told that, Mixon, he's not he's that's who he wants. Him. Okay, so so let me let me ask you. I actually feel like you did do that and I told and that's exactly what it I told you. After the fact, you said he's a straight shooter, and I said shit, wish I knew that. Um okay, so what did you get in return? You moved back from seven to eight, and what, what did you pick up? Back and I got the I don't even remember. I think you essentially just picked up a ninth. I right. basically picked. I swapped. I moved up in the second, and I moved back in the first, and I got a ninth. So okay. I, okay. I got a ninth. So th- that's not a bad play, except you didn't you didn't get your guy there. So yes. So so he trades with Chris. Chris tells him he wants Joe Mixon, and then Chris picks Joe Mixon, and yeah. Animal is so, like, but can fuck, I? He's fucked up my plan. Yeah. Just briefly, let me touch on why. Okay. So going into like any type of a trade talk. You don't assume that the person you're talking to is going to tell you who they're taking. You assume they're going to lie and they're going to maybe – like I have the pick before him. So I'm assuming – first of all, his name is Dalvin Deep. He's got a Dalvin Cook Abbey. So Dalvin Cook's on the board. I'm thinking he's trying to tell me to take Mixon so I will take Mixon and he can get Dalvin. Because why would he say, yeah, listen, I want Dalvin. Don't take him. Or like, why would I – you know, I want Mixon. Don't take him. Nobody does that. Apparently he does. So – that was the big issue here. I thought that he was 100% taking Dalvin Cook, and I could get Joe Mixon the you next pick. You thought he was 100% taking Dalvin Cook based off That's of just his, been his sleeper name for his, two years. Yeah, I didn't know that. Name. Yeah. You should have done your it. research. Yep. If you're an NFL draft GM, you would just made oh, a big was, mistake you know, for not calling. I admit it, it was a terrible managerial Kyle, move. Kyle, Kyle was sitting at you know, 105, and he has a Detroit Lions Abby. Why do you think he didn't take like uh It's different. I'm talking about first-round yeah. guys that could go. In. Well, what do you Dalvin mean? Cook easily going at the 1-8. It's very reasonable. I'm just fucking with you. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> really? So, Is that the right that, thing to be saying so, now? So <laughs> that would have been my favorite move of Animals draft thus far, except... <laughs> The it next pick, better. he outdoes himself. So he's sitting there at the 108, wanting to kill himself because he didn't get Joe Mixon. What do I do? What do I do? He takes Dalvin Cook. So he's sitting there with Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook. And I want to fast forward. Right? Okay, so he takes he takes Jonathan Taylor at the 201. He gets Russell Wilson at the 205. Great picks. I did whatever about those picks. So we're all together last night, right? We're hanging out. Playing Getting Madden. the table, yeah, playing Madden. Oh, well, I got a story for that, too. Later. Max Max is throwing out little notes left and right, and you you feel the depression creeping in on and he's, You just see the sleeper app open, and he's just texting people and sending the most ludicrous trade. He absolutely hates his pick of Dalvin Cook. And we see, you know, we get through the first round, we get through the second round, 301, 302, 307, 308. Derrick Henry still sitting on the board. And Unbelievable. if there's honest. anyone that... Animal likes more than Alvin Kamara. It's Derek Henry. <laughs> more than Layla Star. More than Rachel Star. It wow, I didn't realize both of them had stars as their last uh-huh. name. A lot of porn stars Great like porn star. names. Yeah. More than any of the stars, more than the, the Alvin Kamara's, it's Derek Henry. And he's almost to the point of tears where he's like, I want Derek Henry so bad. So he's like the guy who's on the clock, three oh nine, who's we know is about to take Derek Henry. 
Animal offers him Dalvin Cook for that pick for Derrick Henry straight up and an, and getting an eighth additionally. And so a nine. I got an eight eleven and a nine two. You got an eight and a nine. Yeah. Okay. So he ta- so basically in the rawness of it, it's the one oh eight. I gave up eighty fab though. It doesn't matter. 80 fab, again, 80 fab is fucking Quez Watkins Nothing. money. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, so Animal basically gives up his first round startup pick to move to the 309 and picks up an eighth and a ninth. So, so yeah, just panic is setting when in. When you say the 309, it sounds a lot worse than when you say Derrick Henry. So I just want to preface on that. It is like, what it is. But then it sounds traded, so much worse when Dalvin Cook is a first round pick and Dalvin you could have got more. Cook, yeah, 100%. I traded Dalvin Cook for Derrick Henry, 811 and a 92. Not a three. We could say he's a third, just, but just, Derek Henry. But just the the steps along the way to get. You're right. Oh. You're right. Like in that oh, sense of things. Day, at the end of the trade, you know, Derek Henry eight nine for Dalvin Cook. I honestly might even take that that side for you. Yeah, I didn't know you got the ninth until right now. Yeah. I thought it was just the eighth. But the but the fact when you just look at the raw value, it's moving back from the one to the third and I just picking up an eight. I paid more than I should have to do that. Like you I had to pay this. an extra pick right. to move around because I fucked myself. And I listen. This is why it's important to have a strategy and not go away from it in the middle of the draft. Like I didn't want Dalvin Cook at all; wasn't on my board, and he was there. And I just so if it's so pressured. important, why do you fade that, Learn that theory me. every time? That's why I'm doing a podcast so I can tell you guys how to not you also call draft your team. Star. Well, I mean, look at what I've done. It's pretty. It's I pretty, mean, it, but it's, it's pretty the, incredible. The, the steps that you take to get there, take to got there. Oh, I know. Listen, I'm, I was all over the place. I never steps consider you, myself nice sharp. Startups. Either take to get there or took to got there. You have to use. I know we grew up in a town that like didn't didn't teach us English well. I should have said English good there. That would have been a fucking nice plan. Look at where, us. Yeah. Look, look at us. Who would have thought we'd been here? Look, look at look, us. Look at you. Look, look at, at us. This. Look at us. Hey. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. You think we'd be here, animal? Oh, talking right. shit about your ridiculous picks. Okay, so you're sitting here. What's your squad right now? I'm sitting here. I have Alvin Kamara. Jonathan Taylor, Russell Wilson, and Derrick Henry. Great He's starting squad. four. When is your next pick? The 7-6. So you are going to miss out on the next four rounds, basically. Ish. Um, Ish. Seven, eight. You got a lot of capital later on, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I also have four, nine round, four ninth round picks. Yeah, we'll, well, yeah, okay. So we'll see uh, Yeah, we'll see how it turns out when you get there. Have you moved any future picks yet? Uh, Yes. What would you give up? I only have a second and a third left. Okay, so you already gave up your future first also. Yeah, I don't think care that about needs that to be pick. in there. Yeah, I know. That's why you're bad at Dynasty because you don't care about future first. <laughs> Snacks. You you've you've been steady. I think you've just been straight shooting. Straight you've been shooting, yeah. you've been making nice picks. Let's talk about some of the maybe more surprising picks of the draft. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we can we can get So right I would I would say, you know, I got to my spot at 210 and I hate to be the guy that takes the first tight end off the board like I really yeah, it's ne- I'm never shit. the guy to do that. But I think George Kittle, at 26 years old in a tight end premium league, Hard like 85 catches last year in 14 games, I think he's going to creep. Be top five wide receiver. Easily, yeah. Last year in this scoring format, tight end premium, he was basically, I think, the, the wide receiver two or three. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not going to get the wide receiver two or three, I think getting the tight end one is, is fantastic. So I love the Kittle pick there. From there, this wow. Brett just went with David Montgomery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Dude, you cut at the so four, four. Brett, are you fucking he's a fifth kidding me? Or sixth rounder. You guys can talk all the shit you want about David Montgomery. If you can't see the potential, he's like a fucking Barry Sanders. Love. Wait, why are you so mad? He probably thought he could get him in the fifth. No, no I don't want David Montgomery. I was, we were just talking trade. Okay, okay. So wow. we'll get back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll circle back. Um, so, so Scott, having the rookie fever, n- never seen someone like rookies more than Scott, <laughs> takes J.K. Dobbins at the 211. Like, I don't hate it, but I feel like he could have got him in like four or five more picks, like, and like safely. You don't debate. Think? Uh, well, his next pick was at the 306. Uh, I don't think he would have gotten him there. You don't think so? I do. Maybe. Uh, it's really it's really hard to tell. I don't think anyone else was taking him other than him. So, yeah, J.K. Dobbins, 211. I do think it was – it's definitely the earliest I've ever seen him go, but that was just a guy that, that was just a guy that Scott obviously wanted, and he just He's figured – he, he has him in uh, – Do you have him in, in Go, go Fade, Fade Me? Too, right? yeah. Does he? Yeah. I know he has DeAndre pretty, Swift. Pretty so, sure so, yeah, I mean, that's why I love my DeAndre Swift pick because I see Swift and Dobbins in the same tier, both of them being the guy next year. And you got him and two I got rounds him, later. Yeah, like 13 picks later. So, J.K. Dobbins goes oh, 211. Wow. Joe Burrow, another rookie, goes two twelve. This is a super flex league, of course. Uh, that that's too early for me. I, yeah. I think after those first six guys, this is what you're going to see in a lot of super flex dynasty leagues this year: Mahomes, Jackson, Prescott, Murray, Watson, Wilson. Those are that's that's the six. Like this is one of those ones for me. Like 
I like Joe Burrow, but I'm not going to take him over like a Darnold or a Daniel Jones or something like that. Even if like you have to take him there, it's just not worth it to me. I'd rather get like a Darnold. I would a two uh, three rounds later. I would take Burrow. Yeah, but that's not the question at hand. Like, I just don't like the the, the value there. You you. I mean, yeah, in terms of value, I wouldn't take Burrow at the two twelve either. In terms of value, the four picks in a row are suspect. Dobbins, Burrow, oh, yeah. Mayfield, Brett, Brett. Mayfield's terrible. Brett, yeah, the Mayfield at three hundred one. That that was like his starter price last year. That yeah. might be the worst pick of the draft. Brett, we need to have a sit down, buddy. The second worst he may have just taken. <laughs> like for the guy who traded back I love all it, these right? extra picks, like you definitely could have got Baker in the fourth. Uh, yeah. I, I think he started off not, like you know, this. This pick that he just picked, David Montgomery, could have been Baker probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, Baker would have fell past once. I believe. Right, because you figure Tua and jo- well, I don't know about Tua, but Josh Allen was going before Baker anyway. Mm-hmm. So Baker there, Kenyon Drake. Drake's another guy that I, I think. You know, so Pierce, Pierce, it's not a good dynasty play. Pierce is like with Animal, where very going to be very, very top heavy, going to lack depth, going to lack future assets. Because Pierce traded up to the fourth spot, the Rams of- took Lamar Jackson. So his team right now is Lamar Jackson, uh, Dalvin Cook, Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin, Kenyon Drake. But now he does not pick again until the tenth next year. Next year. The 10th round, and I don't even know if he has a pick next year, to be honest. I think he's out of most of his future picks. So, Pierce is going to be in a – he's going to have like four or five studs. Big time studs. His team is going to yeah. downfall within one year or two years probably, and it's going to hurt pretty bad. So, he's playing for right now, and I respect it. I think this is first Pierce's first dynasty league ever, and this is a move that you – these are moves you would typically see from a first-year dynasty guy. You get so excited during the startup. You're like, oh, my God, all these good names. All I got to do is give up a first next year, a seventh and an eighth in the startup draft this year. And when, again, going back to, like, looking at what you actually gave up in the trade in a, in a player name sense, it looks a little suspect. So that's the way you got to think of these it's things. It's one of those things where you don't realize, like, how many great players are still going to be in, like, the fifth and sixth round. And you don't realize how like much depth, how talent. depth is important. Yeah, because yeah. you think of it from a redraft standpoint. You just need yeah. your solid eight guys, and you're, yeah. you're pretty, you just need one little crack of luck, and you're good for the season. Like, you're going to be able to get Julio Jones late fourth, early fifth, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. Like, that's... That's it right there, yeah. So There's so much value in these in these four, five, six, seven rounds. Yeah, so so Kenyon Drake, a little bit questionable. I mean, we're not going to dive into his outlook for, for everything, but again, next year he's going to be 27. Yeah, 27 age, over the age. I think Chase contract. Edmonds bringing down, breathing down his throat, and then you got air raid offense, D-hop there now. Like, it's just too many. Yeah, he, he's going to be good for 2020, but, like, we don't even know if he's going to have a contract past that, so that well, makes it a little bit questionable. You know what, for Pierce, 2020 may be the only year, so. Yeah, so I guess. Go for it. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way to look at it. And the next pick, I had DJ Moore. He was, you know, if you guys watched, I waited. I, I love that pick. I waited until Tuesday to drop my wide receiver rankings video because I didn't want like fucking Brett or someone look at it and be like, oh, I really want DJ Moore actually. So I waited for today. I waited to make this pick and then drop the wide receiver tier two rankings video. I am fucking all in on DJ Moore. Yeah. I think I really hundred receptions easily. He had eighty five last year with yeah. shitty quarterback play and only played like thirteen and a half games. Mm-hmm. There's no way he doesn't go for 100 and 1500 yeah. yards, I, I'm six a, seven I'm touchdowns. Receptions easy. Yeah, so I love the DJ Moore pick. So I I've been spreading. I'm, I'm happy I did this. Now I have my RB one. I have my tight end one. I have my wide receiver one, you and got it gives an elite player at each position except for quarterback right now. It gives me it gives me flexibility to kind of do what I want over you know the next bunch of picks. I do have to obviously pick up a quarterback, but I'm really happy with how my draft started off. Uh, no more real big surprises here. Noah made his first pick at the 307. He's basically been swapping picks, moving around. Noah uh, has all my picks. Basically. Noah's fucking Literally. Noah owns your life right now. Literally. I mean, you guys say that that's great. Like, he's got my picks. He has no players right now. He has Mark Andrews, and that's it. Like, yeah. he's gonna make picks. Obviously, he's gonna have players, but this is we'll not. See. I'm not saying he's gonna be contending for this year, but I now see him contending. Noah has a 37, and now he's gonna have the four six, four seven, four ten, and then. And then he has back-to-back picks in basically the next yeah, dude, five rounds. He's gonna be, he's gonna have, he's gonna have a lot of depth. Good team, yeah. Yeah, okay. he's gonna have a lot of good players there. So it's interesting strategy. It's so funny, like just looking at people's strategies as they go. You could tell who I feel like goes into it with a plan, and who like animal just like panics and starts trading throughout. Well, Noah's doing my plan right now. Yeah, what he panic? just doing it successfully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that was my original plan because I, I, I listen. I know about the value in the four, five, six rounds. Yeah. So I always, you know, when all my dynasty startups I've ever done. I always try to, you know, get a lot of picks in those rounds and 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 stack players. Yeah, like I'd love to have four fourth round picks right now. Oh, that would be sick. Kidding me? Yeah, I, especially because I didn't realize how far some of these guys were going to fall. Like I never, never thought I'd be able to get Derrick Henry at the three nine. 
I had him on my board at the two five. Almost took him there. Two ten was maybe the th- like I thought that's Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked he fell to three nine. Three nine is far. Like, if DJ Moore was taken in one of the two spots before the Moore pick, like I was telling you guys when I was on the board at two ten, I was like, I there's two guys I want. And I'm probably not going to get both of them. So I'm going to go with the guy that's most likely to get back with me second. So I took Kittle knowing that he wouldn't have made it past the turn if I didn't take him. Had DJ Moore gone off the board, I probably would have taken Henry at the 3-3. Because I'm, I'm, I'm more of a – I know a lot of people are like, hey, he's kind of getting older too. He doesn't have the contract. The Titans have just shown that that's who they're building around. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that, – that's, that's how they run their offense. Yeah, and I can't imagine they don't the, – In the foreseeable future, so – I can't imagine they don't. Uh, yeah, they don't oh, extend yeah. him or give him like and two or three care, years. Dude, if they franchise him, tag another year. I'm not the one who deals with that's Derrick Henry's problem. As long as he's on the field. Yeah, you're gonna get two top five years out of him for yeah. sure over the next two years. So that exactly. would have been a nice little piece there. But I'm glad I got to build, build with youth. Speaking of youth, the four one got to the board, and prior to the draft and prior to the landing spots and stuff, DeAndre Swift had been my rookie RB one since fucking February, March, whatever. I think he's the most all around talented back in this class. Uh, obviously he lands in Detroit, but in the four one man, I don't have any shares of DeAndre Swift in my dynasty league. So I was like, I want to trade up. I want to get my guy. Austin Eckler is still on the board and he's going to give better production this year and probably would have helped me compete a little more. But at the end of the day, like I, I look at Swift as a long-term investment. I'm fucking happy to have him on my team because I already have Saquon, you know, anchoring my, my running backs. It's a good pick for you to still, you know, compete Mm -hmm. and keep your future bright. Yeah. That's why I went with Jonathan Taylor. The same thinking. Like I'm, want to be able to compete but i want to actually have some youth yeah so i'll I'll touch on the trade that i actually made to move up so i had the 410 in this round and i gave brett the 410 he gave me that 401 we swapped 10th and 14th rounders so he moved back nine picks in the fourth he moved up two and a half three rounds whatever it was from the 14th to the 10th and then we swapped next year's third and second i got his second he got my third so um a lot of a lot of swapping going around that's kind of the way you have to play these things like a lot of times you're just moving up from the fifth to the fourth round giving up a seventh and like next year a second or some shit like that so i'm, I'm really happy with the trade i landed my guy deandre swift and i'll be up on the board at the five three in about 10 more picks i'm probably gonna have to get my quarterback one can we uh rewind a little bit to the second round here I, something we kind of just glossed over it's not a huge like thing it's just for me it was more like a personal ranking thing how do you feel about Miles Sanders going the pick before Nick Chubb? I, I don't would... like Miles Sanders in Dynasty. I just don't like him. How? Why? Give us one reason. I'm not going to waste an early round pick on a guy that's not the guy. Would you go Sanders over Chubb? I go Sanders over both the rookies that went before him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Sanders that much. I'm not a, yeah. see, I'm not anti like Miles Sa- Sanders. I, yeah, I, but, well, are you sure? Well, no. Listen, everyone thinks I hate him. I don't hate him. I just I, I don't would... like Miles Sanders in Dynasty. I just don't like him. He's, he's not the guy. You not didn't want him. On him you didn't want him at the, the 311. The... You hate him. <laughs> I'm just that, that, is, that, is, him that is grounds for hatred. As yeah. the rest of the fantasy community. Well, I'm very high on Sanders, but I mean. I but would you go Chubb over Sanders? I love Nick Chubb. I'm taking Sanders so over Chubb. Yes. Can I flip a coin? No. That's how close it is to me. So I would have taken. At the end of the day, I'll t- I'll t- I would take Nick Chubb, yes. I think I would take both those sophomore. But I don't think it's egregious. Both those sophomore running backs before both rookies. I would have taken. Yeah, my, I, I, I was saying it last night. I really. If I was at the twelve, I would have went. I would have went Sanders Jacobs. I almost went back. Chubb instead of Taylor, but I just said fuck it. I'm taking Taylor because I want the youth. Well, yeah. When I took Claude, I was debating Chubb and Jacobs, but I'm just. Curious I wanted Claude. I, was, I wanted Claude somewhere. I was I curious some. where Miles Sanders was going to go because of all the hype. That's been I knew he was the in the big in the big dogs league. Oh, we have the ADP by the way go from the, the sixty round. leagues now. We oh, have yeah. we have the actual Excellent. big dogs. That's yeah, Mike sweet. sent it to me. That will be available. We have collected. I told you guys earlier from the Discord channel. We've put together sixty leagues. Uh, I think like fifty five of them are paid. So this is real ADP. This is the best source of ADP you're probably going to find in the industry because everyone else fucking. Uh, like does weird shit with it and like hides it and you can't fucking find it anywhere. Our ADP is from the Discord leagues. Mike put it together. I uh, shout out to Westron. I believe he helped you with the uh, the API and figuring out how to actually get the numbers calculated and whatnot. That will be in the draft guide within the week. So if you have not copped the draft guide yet, get that shit. Get that what shit. The fuck are you waiting for? Bigdogsdraftguide.com. It's on there for pre-order price because the season-long guide is available July 1st, but the rookie dynasty guide is already available. If you are in a state that's eligible to play um, DFS, FanDuel, DraftKings or whatever, yeah. then you can purchase this through Monkey Knife Fight because they are sponsoring the draft guide this year. Bigdogsdraftguide.com slash MKF. When you deposit on there, 
website using promo code BDGE. You will get access to both the Rookie and Dynasty Guide, which will have our rankings, which will have the fucking ADP from these startups. It's got prospect outlooks for all the rookies on there. Tons of exclusive videos, which we put out every Friday in the guide. Uh, Tons of exclusive articles and then everything in the season long. So use promo code BDGE on Monkey Knife Fight. You'll get access to fucking everything. It's it's literally the best fucking piece of value you can get in the fantasy football industry this year. Make sure you... Play a game after you deposit so you can get the actual draft guide. It won't register until you play a game. So just yeah. take a $2, put on anything. It doesn't matter. You want the draft guide. Exactly, yeah. I, I, I usually leave that, that piece out. A lot of people ask me, once you deposit on Monkey Knife Fight, you play a game that's at least 2 bucks. they'll send me an email verifying that you did, and then I give you access to it, and you'll get an email Bing, from me. bang, boom. got to fucking gift that out right there <laughs> hey. all right so yeah so we were talking about the sophomore and the i just think like at the end of the day they're all good picks and i think like building your team around the core of, of young running backs is never a bad idea no because we're not. seeing how i mean listen we're in, we're in we're midway through the fourth round and the only running back left that's even like semi appetizing is probably aaron jones right now and none of us really feel that good about him in dynasty, yeah, dynasty. Nothing. But when you look at the wide receivers Right. Like, holy this shit. Is, there's going to be a big wide receiver run. And see, this this fourth to sixth round is all wide receivers. Well, you were talking about DeAndre Swift and saying Austin Eckler was still there on the board mm-hmm. and he's going to probably give you more production this year. Um, I was the next pick. And, you know, I had Clyde. I had Kyler. I had Travis Kelsey. Would you, have, you wouldn't have taken Swift if I left no, him there, I right? Have, no, no. Um, only because I just didn't want him in both. Yeah. It's just, you know, bugaboo. So, uh, I don't like Austin Eckler. I'm sure everybody's heard that million fucking times it's not so much i don't like him the it's, player it's like it's a personal person. thing yeah, yeah i don't like him the person i smell a dalvin cook situation no not at all i'm not like this is the fourth round not, regret. The, not the first it's not a regret yeah, it's not a regret it's it tough. looks it, i see i see tomorrow. the regret in his eyes i don't regret it <laughs> snack's gonna be tearing up like usual by tonight you actually you actually hate that pick i really don't know i don't I promise you, I don't hit that pick. Big mad. Okay. Think, uh, what you, think what you want, you fucking slimy idiots. I don't hate the pick. Why are we slimy? Well, I'm looking at his hair, and it just looks so greasy. I was going to say, I look fucking good right now. Am I greasy it might be, yeah. I mean, you gr- look good. Grease action. A little, get a little gray. You got greased up in Madden last night, though. Oh, yeah. Can I just... We don't want to bring this up. Quick People break. don't want to hear quick about break. Madden. This is no, fantasy no, 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 football. Because it's, it's part of the story. It really is. Animal was a broken, beaten, battered... Imbecile was, last night. This like, was pre pre Derrick Henry. Pre Derrick Henry. Pre Derrick Henry, and he's just so upset. And for the last few weeks, so I guess a few months now, we've been doing a little Madden series. And Max was up three to one, and I told him I'm going to win three in a row. <laughs> no, no shot. <laughs> no shot, man. No shot. Whatever. I beat him the first game naturally, so it's three two. Then we play again. Naturally, you won on a last second field goal. Like then we you, play again. Like spank me. Like- and. I decide to play with the Arizona Cardinals, you know, random, because I wanted to play with Kyler Murray, my first-round pick, and it all just worked nice. He gets the Giants. So this diabolical asshole thinks he's going to bury me with my own team. And you know what? He was looking good. 24 nothing. <laughs> so 24 nothing. he was up. The Final first, sp- first of all, the first play of the game – was like a 90 or 75 yards the, and and the 15 broken the, tackle. The first play of the game was fucking incredible. It was, it was terrible. Yeah. And that's why uh, you picked him so you could play with Saquon. Yeah. Because he's like an unstoppable force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't pick the Giants for any other fucking reason. Yeah, you did. Danny Dimes. Didn't, golden, didn't pick him for Danny tape. Dimes because Danny Dimes fucked me. No, you fucked yourself. No. So anyway, anyway, oh, I just want to just wrap get up. to the this. end of the day. I am going to get to. So it, I come all the way back. It's 30 to 24. I got the ball with about a minute left and I, I scramble with Kyler Murray. He fumbles it. Animal takes it all the way down, picks it up, takes it all the way down to my one yard line. First and goal from the one with about a minute and six seconds left. I have three, I do have three timeouts, so if I stop you, it doesn't matter. Even if he kicks a field goal, two possession game. Instead of running the ball with the best he player, fucking in Madden, Pete Carroll's this shit. He Pete Carroll's to, to an exponential. He drops back with a rookie quarterback, darts it over the middle, trying to squeeze it to Evan Ingram. I jump in front, use your pick, the son of a bitch, run it back to the 40 yard line. Bleed the clock to a little cunt of an inch. <laughs> then I punch it in with, with Kyler Murray. And we win 31-30. And his quote-unquote, I'm broken. <laughs> I heard you from in my room. I'm crying.
crumbling. I, yeah. crumbling. I was fucking cracking up. I was up. having a meltdown, dude. dude and then was... you went back to the sticks, and then it's like 2 in the morning, and I fi- finally fall asleep, and all I hear is, yeah, I did it. I did it. I'm like, did <laughs> That's when get, the Henry trade went Derek through. Henry? Like, yeah, 2 in like, the morning. He's like, what? I'm like, I fucking got Henry. I wo- yeah, I woke up, and I looked at my phone, and see trade is completed. I was like, there's no doubt there's anything besides <laughs> Derrick Henry's now on the animals Listen, team. I told you guys I was going to. How are you going to not run the ball with Saquon? Like, he's <laughs> he's the, him, Saquon. It, wait, it's unstoppable. Saquon it's in Madden 20 is almost like Michael Vick in 2014. He literally. He had an all-out blitz call, so it looked like I was just easy to And what do I, doesn't what do I matter. do? Drop back with the linebacker. As soon as I saw the back. offensive lineman stand up, read my football cues. Bam. So I should have fucking lobbed past it, and I didn't. I bolt past it, and it's just, you know, So happens. you made me beat, no, beat it my Giants in an epic collapse. Well, the series is Regardless. pretty great. Yeah, so uh, that was our Madden Adventures. Maybe next time we'll just we'll twitch it. So twitch. Good idea. Twitch.tv slash Big Dogs Fantasy. Go follow us there, and we'll have our fucking animals epic meltdown <laughs> live on you air. You watch him cry. For live. you guys to enjoy. Yeah, all right. So we're sitting here at the 405. We just saw David Montgomery go off the board. Yes. This is about the time where Brett is just starting to melt down. So he took uh, Baker at the 301. I told him we were going to talk a whole lot of shit about him. So Brett, oh, okay, good. Brett Sorry, here it goes. Yeah, so Brett, I mean, the 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 beginning of your draft, not not – Actually, wait. When was your first pick? Okay, so you had Miles Sanders at the 203. I don't Good hate pick. that. Baker Mayfield at the 301. I think he did everything right, like with trading back and whatnot, and then getting wrong. picks, and then picked yeah. so wrong. That's yeah. the only problem with that strategy is if you don't nail your picks. I mean, it's like anything. Obviously, it's not like an How are you going to take David Montgomery over Aaron Jones right now? I, uh, I just don't see why like you traded back this far with like, all these picks and you're going to take David Montgomery now like this early. Yeah, I'm not. It's not like that it's, early. It's just I feel like he could have gotten No, but he could have easily taken him at early. Noah just fucking texted me. He goes that Demont pick. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. lo- love it. Uh yeah, so cuz he had he had not only the 403 404, but he has the 410 mine and then the 412. So he easily could have got David Montgomery. 100%. That's that's how you got to know that's how you got to know the field because the next bunch of picks are Mike and Noah. And Mike and Noah have been fucking vocal about not liking David yeah. Montgomery at all. So you know they're not going to take him. So he could have easily got him yep. later on in that round. Well, listen, that's, I, I wouldn't see Kyle taking him. Know your league. No, definitely I mean, not. Know if someone's I, how can a someone, shooter or not. How can someone in this league – this, no, this is the notorious league where Lucas went on camera and had that whole oh fucking God, spiel yeah. about – he took David Montgomery in the second round last year of yeah. our redraft league. David Montgomery win me. Are you serious? He wants who he wants. And he said and he would have taken him in the first. Yeah, he ended up going like 1-13 in 13 last year. I and, love you. And like that was like one of the most famous clips of, of that entire it vlog. Is, yeah. You guys can talk all the shit you want. I was going to take his glasses off. Or yeah. Like, so he's like, you guys don't see that he's Barry Sanders? If you can't see the potential, he's like a fucking Barry Sanders. He's like some shit like that. <laughs> uh, and then obviously he fucking flames out. So. When you fu- yeah, use my glasses, assholes. So anyone, in, no one in this league wants David Montgomery. No one wants to be the guy that takes David Montgomery. Brett, I did just like in you. the seventh. Yeah, and with one of those ninth rounders, right? Where yeah. you're getting all your studs. Yeah. Animal's so excited. He's like, you don't know who I'm getting in the ninth round. It's all part of the plan. It's all Curtis Samuel. They're all just going to sit on your fucking bench, Animal. You stupid. Have fucking T. Higgins. Good. That's another fucking bust. Terrible pick by oh, you. Man. Anyone who takes T. T. Higgins. You're fucked. All right. Uh, yeah, Mark, I was, any, that um, was, I, I was pretty shook by that. Any like surprises like uh, other than like? Well, I, I think falling? a lot of people were, were talking about D Hop falling three four, but I, I don't think that's. I, I think overall so far, I'm, I'm surprised. Crazy. I'm surprised we haven't seen more more quarterbacks go off the board, mm-hmm. and I'm surprised by the number of rookies that have gone off the board. That's what I was going to say. So basically, I mean, I took Swift at the at the four one, but it, you could pretty much say all the top the top five rookie running backs that everyone likes were gone in the first three rounds. Along with Burrow, along with Tua, yeah. So you know the first seven Superflex what rookie about, drafts uh, are off the board. I'm very curious to like oh, who's this Austin who took Cam Akers. If he would have taken Cam Akers over Derrick Henry, I'm just curious. I mean, I just don't have him here to answer that. But like, I don't see all the the the. I don't see the hype for Cam Akers. No, nah, he's he's been he's moving down my board pretty quickly. A 100 percent running back by committee. Like Malcolm Brown is going to get a ton of carries there because he already knows the system. McVay likes him for some reason. Like I, just, I would say Henderson's more of a yeah. threat. But regardless, the point, way, the point remains. Either way, you've got two guys there. That They've been very vocal about it. I just it. don't like I know Akers. a lot of people say, like, coach speak. But at the same time, they, we've, we've seen, like, seven reports over the last week yeah, or so. It's, it's, yeah, it's not, and, it's I not mean, good You looking. saw them do it a little bit last year because they had that uncertainty with Gurley. Like, Malcolm Brown got carries last year. And whereas with, with Swift, I think there's a much clearer path to... He's going to be on the field and catch probably a lot of passes. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, that's something, too. I didn't even realize that. Like, Akers went before Swift. Like, yeah. I would take Swift over Akers. 
100 uh, yeah. out of 100 times. I would, um, Swift, is Swift is over Akers for me. I, th- I think with Akers, even people, on the Lions, people are inf- inf- infatuated with his pure talent. Like he's got the workhorse size. He's actually, he's, I mean, he's a phenomenal yeah. running back, but he's put into a really, really They're bad situation. They're just hoping he's going to come in and be the next Todd Gurley in that offense. And I don't but see But that, that offense isn't. That offense is not. Todd the Gurley same. was made by that offense. Yeah. Yes. He's a great prospect, I but he was made by that clearly offense. Clearly think. 20 other running backs in the league could have done what he did that year. If it was like when, when Todd Gurley was, you know, peak Todd Gurley and he had two back-to-back years, if like he had got traded after that first year and then they took Cam Akers going into that situation, yeah. like that's when you get fucking crazy about Akers. But their offensive line is still absolute it's, shit. It's bad. Yeah, the, dude, I mean, They're just look at the difference between the holes. There, you have pictures where there's literally like a fucking four-foot hole for Todd Gurley to walk through. And then the next year, those holes just closed up. So like running backs are important, but offensive linemen are importanter. That's a really good Love way that. to put it. Is yeah. that an adverb about, or a pronoun? Um, whatever you want to be. That's just, that's just <laughs> be a slogan. It's just, it's just a moving. It's just we have an, it's just an instant. a moving vocabulary. What, a moving about, dictionary. Uh, what about Big John's uh, draft strategy? He What's he got so far? Very wide receiver heavy. Has a uh, has a great stack with uh, Mahomes and T Hill. Mahomes, Tyreek Hill. He's got Adams. It's so hard to follow D-hop. what the fucking boards are. Adams, D Hop, Tar- That's that's a killer stack yeah, right there. Really nice. Terry killed Devontae Adams, DeAndre. The the problem with, in my opinion, the problem with what he did. If you don't have running backs, not you're going. basically not competing for a championship yeah. this year. And the wide receivers he has, the D Hops, Devontae Adams, are the ones that are going to be good for this year and next year. But you know, by the time the he cliff, has the cliff is coming. By the time he has the running backs in place to win that championship, I think those right might now, be falling the, off. The best strategy in any dynasty startup is to fade wide receiver early and get the running backs. Yeah, if you can get at least one of those elite guys, you're already miles ahead of everybody. I think if you can get a, a McCaffrey or a Zeke or a Alvin Kamara, Ooh. you're doing what so much What the fuck happened better. to Saquon Barkley? Saquon too, yeah, I guess. He's, okay. He's not bad in Madden, right? I, guess you I wouldn't run him on the one-yard line, but... But, like, you're going to see in the seventh and sixth round, like, wide receiver ones will still be available. Yeah. So, I just think that if, if, if you're starting any type of a dynasty startup and you don't want to listen to me, that's fine, but <laughs> you should hammer running backs early. Early, early, early. They're just the not there. They're just not there once yeah. you get to the fourth, fifth early round. Early and often. That's it. Yeah. Like yeah. when you, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking to compete year one, and you can't do that without solid running back play. Like wide receivers, sure, they're fun to have in they your lineup, will emerge. but you're gonna have guys like you can get a guy like Denzel Mims in like the tenth or twelfth or whatever, yeah. and he could be a wide receiver more one and more each year. One day. Are, look at this past rookie class. Like these wide receivers are just bred differently now. They're, yep. they're coming in like 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 a bat out of hell. So. Ooh. Snacks. Like a bat out of hell. All right. Um, it's great. It's fucking love meatloaf. So that's that's going to wrap up the first three rounds and, and four picks. I think maybe next week we just run it back with the rest of the draft. Cause yeah, I feel like we should just kind of continue it. doing this as we're doing it, right? Yeah, because, this, I mean, people are still going through their drafts. So it's, it's, good, good it's, good it's good for them to hear, too. So. Yeah, because if you guys mock, are competing. You know, this yeah, is real shit. Real motherfucking. Our lives are on the line. as real as it fucking gets. I Mo- took an oath for this shit. First place, $2 million on the line. Shit, son. Last place, death. Death. That's why. Oh, that's why snacks. Is, away my studs. Why do you think animals dread so <laughs> terribly so far? Uh, so yeah, you guys can follow along. We also can. We'll link the draft board. So there's going to be a link down below where you guys can just click on it at any time if you want to favorite it, bookmark it, and you. Oh my god, I didn't even see you fucking write that on there. You cunt. <laughs> Uh, you can you can see the draft board, which will be updated real time. You can always share the draft boards on Sleeper if you're wondering. That's the the app that we're using Sleeper for this draft. Again, if y'all want to join the Dynasty League, join the Discord. There's a million big dogs audience members in there looking to start Dynasty Leagues all the time. Hopefully, we're giving yeah, you some value. At, at Yannick. At Yannick. What does that mean? Him. Tag Yannick. Y O N I C, right? Yeah. yeah. I, that was my favorite comment. Yeah. Who's Yannick? <laughs> that made me. Fun. Who's Sonic? <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's all we got for you today. If I leave you with anything, go cop that big dog's draft guide. Go join Discord. Go listen to the new Y.E. Yelling podcast. Please the rating like, review would be subscribe. beautiful. Please like, please subscribe. Stay follow comment. These. Stay safe. Follow these two assholes. Comment some follow. stuff. I'll answer. Do everything that you could possibly do. For the next 20 minutes, just fucking do everything. Every Fuck f- our world up. Every link we fucking put in the description. Fuck this shit up. Click like it. Like it and share it. Love you. Bye. Talk all the shit you want.